to break the barrier, uh, but he got drafted by the uh, Army, Korean War. So that really uh, put him us put an end to his professional baseball career. Before that, how many years did he play in the, in the Negro Leagues? He played uh, between, I would say, what, eight years, maybe a little more. You know, it just depends. Uh, they played all, all year, you know, so. And besides uh, the Kansas City Monarchs, what other team did he play with? Uh, he played with the uh, uh, Baron. Birmingham Barons and Kansas City Monarchs. Has there ever been a movie or a documentary about any Negro League player besides Jackie Robinson that you know of? As a player, maybe not a famous player, but a, a regular player that you can learn even more about uh, what went on behind the scenes and what they went through on the travels and everything. No, I haven't. I haven't seen any Negro League baseball player. Uh, been interviewed, you know, besides not even them, you know, they, they don't too much talk about what really went on back then, you know, so I'm going to leave that alone, you know, but uh, there's stories need to be told about uh, the black Negro League. Well, players. how did your father feel about Jackie Robinson being drafted by the Brooklyn Dodgers in the 1947? Everybody was happy. Uh, but if he wouldn't have got drafted in the Army, there'd have been a lot of players back then would have got uh, drafted. But uh, thank God it was Jackie who did it. Uh, yeah. So actually, them being drafted, we think that was designed for people for playing in the Major League? What was that person in Them being drafted in the military? Do you think that was by design to keep them from playing in the major league? Uh, it could have been, you know. Uh, I don't know. I never asked my father that question or not, but it's, it, it could have been. I can't answer that honestly, so I'm not going to speak on that, you know. Now, we know about Statue Page's pitching. What about your father's? Dad was up there. Yeah, I could tell. I mean, he taught us. He taught my brother. He taught me. I was pitching. Uh Little League, uh, Babe Ruth League. He taught all the kids in the morning, Iowa, you know, and he won state championships. I, myself, I was in the ninth grade playing JV ball. So, yeah, Dad was a hell of a teacher. He played hard by him. He played, he, he wasn't nothing soft about his personality. Hard ball. And that's how he raised his kids, at least me. Well, how good was he compared to other pitchers today? Compared to Negro Leagues and him, you know. Well, back then, you know, they had uh, the fight leagues professionally play against them. They beat them every time. So that should tell you that if they was to play, they could compete with the, uh, the league. <coughs> How was your father's stats, you know, back then, compared to other major leagues that pitchers that played? They was better than theirs. All of them. It was a better league. It was better. Do you think the Negro Leagues uh, don't get what it deserves today compared to what struggles has been through and compared to what has contributed to Major League Baseball today? No. No, they don't. They, they, they have missed out a whole lot. You know, it's, it's just like what's going on in this world today. Black people don't get enough, you know. Back then, they didn't get enough. So you can call it like it is, see it like you see it. Now, say for instance, when your father and uh, the Monarchs or the Birmingham uh, Barons were on the road, um, you said something to me personally about him having to cook for the players and they're cooking themselves and enjoying themselves because they couldn't eat in white restaurants. Yeah, well, that went on all the time, you know, so they had to, you know, look out for themselves and do what they had to do to survive, you know, so let everybody cook. My dad was a good cook. Cooked in the uh, army, so you know 
everybody helped each other out back then in the league. What kind of stories did your father share with you about, you know, them cooking with us, but I saw playing basketball, excuse me, baseball, them having, you know, that togetherness as a team and family, you know? I'm not understanding the question. Well, like I said, for instance, you have, you know, you're in a baseball team or basketball team. You're more like a family, you know, and they travel going from city to city playing. What kind of stories do they tell you about their sharing and stuff, you know, and all that and with each other and stuff, being brothers and the brotherhood, that type of thing, you know? Well, as far as the stories and everything, I could be here an hour long. I see. You know, so there, there's a lot of stories and they need to be told. You know, we don't have enough time to tell all the stories <laughs> and everything that they went through. It, 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 it doesn't happen in a few minutes, you know, so there's stories. You know, there's not been, a, I'll tell you a little story how the Ku, Ku Klux Klan used to come to some of their games and intimidate them. I see. You know, so that's never been told. That's never been on the screen. And so, how was that? Plenty of stories, you know. And how was that? You don't mind me asking. How was it? Yes, sir. I don't sir. know how it was. I wasn't back there. You know. Uh, According to how your father told you. It need to be told. There's a lot of stories. A lot of stories. Now, there's one story actually I'm remembering. You said um, that was in um, actually uh, printed that your father said he heard click clippity clap of the horses and he saw Klansman in the front row of the baseball. That's another story. You know that, you know, they had to watch themselves. It was dangerous even to play ball back then. They didn't know what to expect. A lot of players were in fear, you know, while they played, but they still. Still beat the team and still play, you know. So, it's going on today, you know. It's going on today. Look at look, look at the White House. Look look, look at the uh, Capitol. You know, same thing. Now, fear in people. Okay. Now, your father was drafted by the Minnesota Twins, correct? Yeah, after, you know, he got an age and everything, they had a special draft for some of the Negro League players that were still living. And yes, the Minnesota Twins did draft him in 2008. How did that make you feel personally? I didn't like it. I mean, you know, why give them recognition now? When they're, some of them can't walk, a lot of them, some of them gone. Some of them, you know, their illness. You know, my dad's legs were gone. So why, why, why do it then? I should have did it a long time ago, you know, but uh, it is what it is. And how did you feel about it personally? Your father, I mean, besides, you had your father, I mean, your father feel about it personally? He felt the same way. He didn't, you know, he felt the same way. Is there one thing you want people to remember um, your father for, for, you, for the things that contributed to the Negro Leagues? That question. Is there one thing you want people to remember their father for? What would it be him contributing to the Negro Leagues and you know their progression? Like his contributions just, to the Negro Leagues in the history. Keep the legend on. Keep keep it going. You know, don't let it die. You know, keep 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 it real. Keep it uncut. Let it be told. Let the stories be told. There's a lot to be told out there, and keep it going. And what are you doing to contribute to that? I haven't had the option yet. Uh, I'm here trying to let it be known, you know. And what do you desire for it to happen if you had the power to make it happen? Enough, enough to be told, man. I just, I just want to tell the story about what's going on, you know, what, what really been happening. Right. Well, Brian Bell, I thank you very much for the interview. I appreciate it very much. Uh, you know, um, we, as black people, need to hear about what happened in the Negro Leagues, our history, because how can we go progress, uh, prevent, excuse me, progress or go further if we don't know where we come from? And um, how can we know where we've been from our history. So I really thank you for interviewing with me. Thank you very much for listening, audience. Until next time, you guys have a nice evening. Thank you.